Today's project is a little bit different than a lot of what we do. Uh, looking at putting a new antenna on the TJ and touching on the topic of antenna tuning, which we care about the idea of trying to maximize the performance of the antenna, the ability of a radio to reach out. So first things first, I suggest we have a great big yellow uh, splash at about this point in the video that says caution radio geek content and I think that should also probably be the thumbnail when this shows up in the channel because this is going to be content that you either care about or you don't and if you're not a radio person and not interested in this it's going to be completely uninteresting topic if you do care and you're interested in the idea of why we tune antennas, how to tune an antenna, and a new trick that I've learned recently to try to make it easier, then stay tuned. Okay, so a quick explanation about what we're going to be doing before we jump into it so you understand the tools that are in play. If you've tuned radio antennas before, CB, ham radio, GMRS, it's all kind of the same deal, you've probably seen a tool similar to this. This is a digital SWR meter, power meter. The, a lot of other ones people have will be the uh, old analog versions of these, which provide the ability to connect it to a radio and see how much power is coming from the radio towards the antenna and how much the term is reflected energy or reflected power is coming back from the antenna towards the radio. That's your SWR standing wave ratio. The idea is to minimize that. Historically, we use a tool like this to get a reading at a low point on the radio output, uh, like you know, say channel one on a CV, and then a high point, say channel 40. And then we use those two numbers to decide if the antenna is tuned properly, too short or too long. Today I'm going to be using a little bit different tool to do this, which I think makes this job a whole lot easier. The tool we're going to be working with is called, is this Nano VNA, where the VNA stands for Vector Network Analyzer. Don't worry about it, this can do a lot more than what we're using it for today, but today we're going to use it to make this tuning process a lot simpler. This is a little, little tiny guy. You get, get it on Amazon for about 60 bucks, which is similar to what you would pay for this uh, digital SWR meter. And what it does is connect to the antenna just like the SWR meter would, leveraging you know whatever combination of patch cables, connectors, and whatnot are necessary. We'll actually run an SWR uh, sweep across a defined list, list of frequencies. So you can actually specify your low frequency and your high frequency and it'll run a sweep across those and provides a graphical view of the SWR at each of the data points as it runs the sweep. That lets you see what the curve for the antenna looks like, as well as where the antenna is optimal or not optimal based upon the range of frequencies you're tuning. This actually makes it a lot easier to decide, am I where I want to be? Do I want to make a change to tune the antenna better? So with that, let's dive into what we're doing. This starts by disconnecting the antenna from the radio completely, which is a little bit different than if you're using a typical SWR meter where you would have to insert the meter between the radio and the antenna. This generates the signal itself, which makes it a little easier to work with in terms of connections. Okay. So now, what I'm going to do is turn the device on. And it's already configured and running a sweep. Now, in this case, what I want to do is change the range of frequencies that it's pulling. 
And I'm working with a situation where I'm trying to set up a compromise for a bunch of frequencies and a bunch of different radios that operate in a very similar band. So if you're tuning CB, it's going to be a little bit different. If you're tuning you know, HF uh, ham, it'll be different. If you're tuning GMRS, it'll be different. In my case, I'm interested in stuff that starts at about 445 megahertz and runs to about 470 megahertz. And so that gives me a sweep across that range. And I can see that here at the bottom, I've got a SWR of about 1.5 up here in the corner of this meter. And then I can run my little pointer here across and I can see this is actually, this antenna as it exists today is giving me about a 1.3 at 455 megahertz. And as I get up towards the top end of the band here that I would be working with, I have a 1.8. How so, satisfying are you with that band? So the antenna that's on the radio is acceptable. We generally consider anything below 2.0 uh, to be a good SWR reading. Lower is generally better because if you think of it as I'm sending out 10 watts of power to my antenna, some portion of that is being reflected back to the radio by the antenna, and it's that, that ratio that determines how much. So a lower ratio means I'm reflecting less power back to the radio. So that's the antenna that is currently on the vehicle, and you know that's actually not a bad, uh, it's a bad setup. Now, what I'm looking at is I want to put a taller antenna, which we believe will have a better response range and probably provide a better uh, overall experience for the vehicle. All right, so this is the new antenna we want to put on the Jeep, replacing the existing antenna. And again, the, the SWR on this one is acceptable. The thing is, it's actually below the roof line of the vehicle. And so we would like to have a little bit more uh, height to get better coverage from this radio. So I have this longer antenna it's supposed to be good for the same frequency range. We're going to try and see if we can get better readings. And we may need to tune this antenna a little bit to make it uh, optimal. For the Kenneth, did you pick any special brand or anything? So this was research based on uh, reviews online uh, about what antennas had worked well in this frequency range. Uh, Excellent. So you kind of have to know your frequency range. You want to know what you're using the antenna for because you want to match the antenna to your application. And HAM and GMRS and all that are different. Yeah, HAM is on a different... Uh, uh, range of frequencies. GMRS is on a different set of frequencies. CB is on a different set of frequencies. And so, yeah, you, you need to tune and match the antenna to your application. This one is actually tuned towards uh, two meter ham and uh, 70 centimeter ham, which I think will work well for the range of frequencies that we're actually working with. So that is now in place. I have easy access to the set screws to allow me to adjust the length of the antenna. Let's take a look and see what the frequency sweep looks like. All right, so we start by putting this, this in. Now, same sweep that we had running before. We're now at a SWR at 3.063 at the high end of the frequency band, which is certainly a lot worse or a lot less optimal than the uh, 1.8 we were at. And as we come down, we see that at about 447, we're actually at a 1.05. So we've got a really good uh, SWR at the bottom end of this band, but really not acceptable at the top end. So what we want to do is try to tune this. Now, based on the way this works, with the lower frequency being better and the higher frequency being worse, that tells me that the antenna is too long. And so I need to shorten my antenna 
to try to move this curve higher up in the frequency. And so this antenna is too long. We're going to make it shorter. So I saw two set screws. Yep. And you loosen the set screw. And the way this works, it is just a stainless steel rod sitting in the, in the thing. So what we'll do is we'll see how short we can go and what that does for us in terms of our SWR reading. So you want to put the antenna in and check it and then check and see if our reading has gotten better or worse. Okay, so we see here our pointer is actually now slightly moved off. This is one of the things that is nice about using this tool as opposed to the traditional uh, SWR meters is I can actually see where it was and where it is now. Uh, and so that was optimal. Uh, it has moved a little bit, but we clearly need to make the antenna a lot shorter for it to be optimal for this application. Okay. So for purposes of illustration, I'm going to go ahead and make the antenna longer. And we see that we've made it about a quarter inch or so longer than it was before. And now again, we'll check the SWR and see how the curve has moved. So having made the antenna longer, we see that the curve moved in the wrong direction. And we now have very high SWRs up here at the top end of the band and a low SWR at the bottom. So again, this makes it really easy to see, hey, hey buddy, you went the wrong direction and we need to, we need to make this antenna shorter. Okay, so when you're working with these, these are typically stainless steel antennas. It takes some kind of a tool to cut them to make them shorter than they are physically. You want to make small adjustments as you, as you go. And in my case, we're going to do this with a cutoff wheel. So you want to try to make sure that the antenna is solid and stable as you make your uh, adjust cuts. Last was just to deburr the end of it a little bit so there's not a ridge when we're trying to put it back into the antenna fixture. Tighten it down and see if we moved our frequency sweep in the right direction. We've definitely moved the curve in the direction we wanted it to go with our optimal now at about 450 megahertz and an SWR of 1.1. As we get up towards the high end of the band where we want to operate, we're at 2.8. So we're still not really acceptable, and we're really optimized to a very, very low end of the band, with our lowest being here at about 1.4. So the antenna is still too long. We want to remove a little bit more. So after our second adjustment, we see again our curve has moved in the correct direction and that our SWR at the top of the sweep has come down some. We're now at a point where at our at the bottom of the curve is now almost 455 megahertz at a 1.2. With a 1.7 at the bottom end and a 2.5 at the top. So we'd like to move this a little bit further still to try to optimize this antenna for this, this uh, application. So we're now at a point where at the bottom end of the frequency range we're right about 2.0. So that's where we would like the bottom of our frequency range to be. In the middle, we're now at a 1.2, 1.25, which is a very, very acceptable. And we're at 2.1 at the very top. So you could argue that maybe just a small additional adjustment, but I think actually for our application, we're gonna call that good enough. 
And that's the way you tune an antenna. What you doing now, Kenneth? So this is technically a dual band antenna. So I'm checking how it operates against the other band, which is 144 to 148 megahertz. We see that it's a very different curve with the same antenna in the same situation, getting better as the frequency increases. So the antenna is actually now too short for this band. However, at the portion of this band that I typically operate in, we're right at about 2.0. So again, the antenna is acceptable for this band, though certainly less optimal than it is for the band where I've primarily tuned it. Uh, a compromise on this would be to make the antenna a little bit longer, which will improve its performance on this band, but reduce its performance on the other band that we've tuned it for. So I'm just going to ensure that I've got good electrical contact with the set screws to the antenna. Now that I've got it kind of dialed in where I want it. Ish. For this band. For this band, yes, you're right. And you're just going to use a little sandpaper where the set screws go? A little, little emery cloth here on the bottom to remove some of the black coating. Don't make a mess. And so you can see where the set screws are making contact. You can also check it and drop it in. Mark it, know where it comes out. And know that what I want to do is probably remove the coating up to about that point, just below where my fingers are at. So we see we've removed the, the coating so we get a good electrical connection when it's in the uh, in the base here. Take one last look at the DNA. Okay, let's do one last check. Put it back to the band that we were interested in that started at 445 megahertz and stops at 470 megahertz. And we see that it's still giving us about what we want with a 2.0, 2.1 at the bottom of the band. A 1.25 in the middle. And a 2.1 at the top. So we actually landed pretty well centered for the usable bandwidth that we're looking for. So the original antenna had a 1.5 and a 1.8 with the new antenna having a 2.0 and 2.1 and so arguably the original antenna may have had a little bit better SWR. The new antenna however is a good 10 inches longer and extends above the roof line of the Jeep which should give us a little bit more gain on the signal strength and overall a little bit better performance. And with that we're going to call it good.